All right, guys, so an assertion has been made that um, the tests I did earlier were invalid because the injectors were not turned on. Now, in my opinion, that's incorrect. I'm gonna make a prediction that with the injectors on, the difference between the rails is actually gonna be less uh, than with the injectors are off because there's less fuel going through the crossover. So let's try it and see what happens. First, I'm gonna run it with the injectors off and measure the pressure difference between the rails. Then I'm gonna turn the injectors on and we're gonna measure the pressure difference again. That's two pumps and uh, eight uh, TRD SC injectors. All right, so let's see how much these two pumps flow. Let's use our trusty bucket and a stopwatch and time it. There she goes. And stop. Okay, so it took 46 and a half seconds to fill a four liter jug which equals 310 liters an hour. So that's what we're pumping with these two pumps through both rails in series, through the factory FPR, which actually the FPR right now is the biggest restriction. Uh, if we didn't have it, uh, we would be pumping a lot more with these two pumps. All right, so two pumps, injectors are off, rail one pressure. 61 and a half psi. No injectors on. Pressure in rail two is 54 and a half psi. All right, let's also check the pressure uh, drop across the supply line with two pumps running and see what it is. So we have uh, 75 and a half here the manifold. Well, that's a pretty significant drop between the inlet and outlet of the feed line. So that is definitely a concern on the stock fuel system. Okay, all the injectors are firing. We still have some return from the regulator. And there is our pressure. 48 in first rail. Okay, for the finale. Everything is on, all eight injectors on. Rail two pressure. 44 and a half. So I think uh, that pretty much sums it up. We have less pressure drop between the rails with the injectors running than when they're not. Thank you. All right, let's check the pressure at the pumps with everything running. So we have 62 and a half. So this is kind of your realistic scenario. Everything is on, all the injectors are firing. Some still coming back from the regulator. 62 and a half PSI. All right, I also measured the fuel flow through the system with all the injectors on, and I got uh, about 10% more at 340 liters an hour, which makes sense. I mean, before we had to jam all of the fuel out of this FPI return, and now we are able to flow it out of the injectors as well. So that was the flow rating with these two pumps um, with everything operating as it would in the car. Okay guys, it's also been asserted that um, with the fuel uh, flowing out of the injectors, there will be a pressure drop across the rail from here to there. So I call bullshit and we're going to test it right now and see. Okay, so we have 44 and a half at the outlet of the rail and let's see what we have at the inlet. Oh hey, it's also 44 and a half. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it, but uh, yeah, so here we go. There is no pressure drop across the rail between here and there with the injectors running. The rails are sufficient for a lock as long as you hook them up properly. Do not hook them up in series how they are stock. It's not going to work. It's going to be a huge pressure drop. But uh, later on we're going to set it up in parallel and I'll show you how to make the stock rails work well for you. 
All right, guys, so let's summarize our findings. So uh, this was uh, with the injector off, injectors off running two pumps. Uh, we had a 14 PSI drop in the supply line, which is quite significant. So it shows us that the supply line could definitely use some upgrading. The crossover pressure drop was 7 PSI, which is also quite a bit. And then the pressure drop across the rail itself was nothing. It was the same at the inlet and outlet of the rail. Now let's go over here where we turned all eight uh, TRD injectors on. So our um, flow increase makes sense because uh, more fuel was able to come out of the system. You know, it didn't have to get all forced through the FPR. Uh, our pressure drop through the supply line was pretty much the same, 14 PSI. But look at this, the crossover pressure drop. It was half of what it was before, which of course makes perfect sense. I mean, here we're trying to run all 300 liters per hour through that crossover, creating a big pressure drop. Here, half of that flow is getting dumped out of the rail one, and only half of it has to cross over into rail two. So we end up with a lot less pressure drop. And uh, as expected, the rail itself, zero PSI different between the inlet and outlet of the rail. So I still haven't been able to see any difference in pressure across the rails. Now, next time I'm gonna set up three pumps and uh, we're gonna, you know, see if we can get, uh, get the rail uh, cross section itself to become a restriction. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I just wanna make some clear though uh, to all of you. Um, I don't endorse or support or try to undermine any product or business. I've started this channel just to show you what can be done with a Tundra. You know, I'm kind of learning as I go. I do tests, I learn things, so, and I'm just putting the information out there. You do with it what you see fit. Um, unlike some individuals, I don't get any kickbacks for promoting uh, anybody's product or anything along those lines. So, um, moving forward, uh, I've got a kid on the way, or a third kid on the way, so I'm not going to have a lot of time to spend on uh, social media platforms. I'm still going to post videos of things that I do with my truck, but I'm not going to be present as much and, uh, you know, have all the time in the world to respond to your comments and all of that. So don't take it personally. I'm still around, but uh, I'll just be less actively involved. All right, I'll see you on the next video. I'm gonna run three pumps, maybe even four pumps, and we'll see if we can uh, reach the limit of the factory fuel rails. Cheers.